Hello, you are listening to the Eagles Podcast Network. This is the College Sports Podcast. I'm Ethan Bass. And I'm Ryan Skinny. Welcome back to another fabulous episode. Today, we're looking at the 24-7 Sports Preseason 2020 Rankings for College Football. I really like these rankings today, so it's going to be uh, pretty fun, the top 25 normally. So, uh, but first, I would like to thank a couple of people. First, the people who are watching this. Uh, thank you for all your support, especially on the pump pump videos I've been posting on my Instagram. We're getting over 200 views per thing, so thank you very much. Second, I'd like to thank our uh, dude who sponsors this, which is Coach Greco from North Broward. Big shout out to him. He he provides the equipment most of the time, and big shout out to him. So let's get first started with these breathing top 10, and I'm just gonna go through these rankings uh, pretty quick, and and then we will. Um, uh, what we like for each team going on. So for number one, we have Ohio State. Number two, we have Clemson. Uh, number three, we have Alabama. Number four, we have Georgia. Number five, Penn State. Number six, Florida. Seven, Oklahoma. Eight, Notre Dame. Nine, LSU, the defending national championships. Uh, uh, Ten is Wisconsin. Eleven, Oregon. Twelve, a and Texas a and right there. Tied for number 13's Auburn, and then the other 13's Texas. Um, 15's, oh, um, 15 is Oklahoma State. Um, yep. And then 16 is USC. 17 is Michigan. And what was done here, Minnesota is 18. Uh, 19 is North Carolina. Very interesting they put um, them this low on the list. Uh, 20 is UCF. And then we have twenty, and then we have twenty um, one Arizona State, twenty two tied is Tennessee, very good recruiting job by them. Then Utah tied for twenty two, number twenty four is V Tech, and then twenty five is Cincinnati. Yeah, Buckeyes. So what do you see out of Ohio State this year? I mean, they're coming off a loss in the playoff semifinal to Clemson. Uh, yeah. So that performance that Justin Field put on in the playoffs. Or- Remarkable and um, couldn't tap off the big win against Clemson. But a uh, year coming back, Heisman Trophy finalist, um, he's going to be a senior this year with wide receivers with Chris Olav and Garrett Wilson. I yep. feel like those three three key pieces are going to fuel the fire for Ohio State and don't count out their defense. So, number one where it's at is Ohio State. And with Ohio State and Clemson being at one and two, it will be a back and forth uh, year going with the quarterback battles, as we know, Trevor Lawrence and Yeah, so I I really like Ohio State's offensive line. You know, they're coming off with, uh, in the the returning of the left tackle, their center, and Josh Myers, and then the right guard and Wyatt Davis. So they have a really good offensive line. Moving on to number two, we have the Clemson Tigers, who lost in the national championship game over Clemson. Really good uh, last year. I expect them to be even better this year because Trevor Lawrence is in his junior year, if I believe. So I believe that he will be even better than last year because he did have a rocky start in the beginning, but then he grew up a little. Right. So Clemson had a, had a, had a phenomenal year, couldn't cap it off against LSU. But like I said, with Justin Fields, Trevor Lawrence is also back. For yeah, the, for the program, and Dabo Sweeney's doing an incredible job. Hate to say that, but he is yeah. doing a remarkable job having Isaiah Simmons uh, going to the going to the Cardinals. Yeah, the outstanding defense. But the bad start to the season is with Justin Ross not being able to play. True, so big bummer to them. But you know, so I believe that their backups at Clemson University are well. Back them up and play for Justin Ross this and season. And so don't forget that be- Clemson's defensive line is really good. I mean, they have Tyler Davis, Xavier Thomas, and uh, Brian. So I'm um, Brian. So and that's a very good defensive line. So do not forget about that defensive line. Yeah, defense wins championships. Every, uh, that's what everyone says. So with Tyler Davis, like you mentioned, uh, the defensive line will just fuel the fire, uh, like most of the other teams. Um, Defense just on the other side and just completely. Uh, the, well, if they dominate, dominate their opponents, they'll they'll go on to many more things. 
So going on to number three, we have Alabama. Now Alabama, I feel like uh, I feel like Alabama disappointed us last year. I, I know, and it's not a very good season, but of course, uh, everyone expects Alabama to go to the playoff every year. But uh, I, I mean, they did lose Tua, which is a huge hit. I mean, he was injured for uh, about five games or so, so I mean that declined that. But but we did see Mac Jones. Now, what do you see out of Mac Jones? Or do you see Bryce Young? And like, who do you see starting next year? For the Alabama Crimson Tide. So Alabama was in a predicament with two his brother leaving. Yeah, to Maryland. So yeah, Maryland got really lucky. So Mac Jones came into a tough situation with Tua going down last year, as we all know. Tua now is going to the Dolph- to the Dolphins. Yeah. And now Mac Jones has a really great opportunity playing a whole season with Alabama. And having backups like J- Jalen Waddle having um, strong screen pass, you know, like last last year he, he was all over the field, and I feel like Alabama is going to be the same, True. same as every year. Um, high expectations, and even with the top three, it can flip flop a little bit for the first six weeks of the year. Um, I, I, I still see Alabama doing fantastic. I, I, I mean, I predict them going to the playoff this year, but I still see them. Yeah, so Ohio State, Clemson, and, and Alabama have the chance to flip-flop in the rankings the first True. couple weeks, so that would be really interesting. All right, now moving on to number four, we have the Georgia Bulldogs. Now, Georgia plays Alabama in week three, and I do not agree with this. It's the first one, that 247. I do not agree with you. Again, they're coming in with Justin Fields coming in. They're also bringing JT Daniels out of UCSC. There's going to be a lot of quarterback battle. But to be honest, it, it I, I mean, there's no spring ball, and there's very little practice. Like, I mean, they're starting July 1st, I believe. So, like, there's very little, like, practice uh, for the scheme for those two quarterbacks to get into the Kirby Smart system. So, I do not know how that's going to work out. But, again, they do play Alabama week three. That's going to be a huge matchup. It's going to be the first real test for who, who's ever starting that quarterback. Yeah, so, Jamie Newman, coming from Wake Forest, if you look at this kid... He was he. He's the type of guy who runs all over the field. If True. he doesn't have a great receiver, he can run the ball. Um, he can make yards from scratch, getting out of tackles. And on the other side, I really do not know uh, why JT Daniels from USC had the opportunity to transfer when he when you you will have two quarterbacks, legit quarterbacks, uh, trying out for the job. So. If Kirby Smart times is up right, up right, um, I will see two quarterbacks a game, which is not very great for their playing time, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, I I can agree with that. I I mean, like, it's not good for playing time, but we, I mean, we'll see. Who comes on top? All right, now going on to number five, we have Penn State. Uh, Penn State, uh, they're and, and they're fantastic last year. Uh, they got into a New Year's Six game, if I believe, yep, and they beat um, uh, what's the team? And they, and they beat Memphis, but then Mike Minerval went to um, Florida State. But um, and, and and they did lose a couple people, like the Matos dude. He was fantastic, and Garrett Taylor. So, what do you see out of Penn State out of this year? Uh, um, Penn State always had the, has a year or two of high expectations, as most teams do. But it's the it's the, comes down to the reason if they can be Ohio State and Michigan, those two spots on the schedule in the Big Ten will factor into play. And with KJ Hamler gone, um, Sean Clifford has a has a tough time, or gonna, is going to have a tough time looking for that key wide receiver again. Yeah, true. All right, now moving on to number six. Now, it's Florida Gators, but as you guys know, I'm a massive Ford fan, but I'm going to try to give you an unbiased opinion here, but I'd still, it's still it's going to sound biased, but I predict big things from Florida, and here's why. Now, Kyle Trask is coming off a fantastic year, and they also have Emory Jones, so don't forget that. Now, Kyle Pitts, if you saw Kyle Pitts in last year at the LSU game, he he was amazing. Now Kyle Pitts is very good, but Florida is losing John Grenard and um, 
to Zuniga, but then uh, but then they brought in uh, transfer Brennan Cox and Zachary Carter's coming up pretty good year. But watch out for Kari Elam. Now Elam is probably going to be a top ten pick in a couple of years, and watch out for him. Then the defensive back. Right. So all all your all your takes are are very great. I feel like even if you're a Florida Gators fan or not, you still have high expectations. Like yeah. Kyle Trask came in last year for Felipe Franks after that injury and you did not expect him to go high high in the rankings like 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 he, what he did so Kyle Trask being a senior now uh, I and yeah. Kyle Pitts just that, that, that duo but um with like you said Jubari Zuniga's Zuniga, gone Zuniga and Jonathan Grenard gone they still have much more replacements and I the replacement yeah. class for this year and next year the years to come is just remarkable so uh, yeah with Georgia transfers in, uh, Brendan Cox, uh, just uh, what, and Marco Wilson and, and, and Elon. And, 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 and don't they, forget they got the running back, uh, Lorenzo Lungard at Miami, and then they also have Damian Pierce. So this is looking a pretty good team. And the only worry I have, though, is the offensive line. But that gives me the question going on to here. If Florida does not beat Georgia this year, and do you ever see them beating Georgia with the Dan Mullen era? Yeah. If they beat Georgia, that's going to be a huge spot to making them a top contender in the college football playoff. All right. Now moving on to number seven, we have the Oklahoma Sooners. Now, Oklahoma, I feel like they always have a welcome, good quarterback, but now they got Spencer Rowder. Who do you see out of um, what do you see out of Oklahoma? Well, you see a lot of things. So, I mean, diff- three different quarterbacks in three different years that's just crazy to me um but Spencer Rattler it's gonna be a, it's gonna be like another Jalen Hurts true um, yeah uh, I just feel I just see a lot of uh, I don't see any wide receivers that look outstanding on this team but um the quarterback position will make it happen yeah, I guess. All right, now moving on to Notre Dame. Uh, they have senior quarterback Ian Buck coming back. I mean, that's pretty positive. And so I keep on asking this, but what do you see out of Notre Dame, man? Uh, I see a lot of great things. Uh, unfortunately, they won't go to Ireland this year. True. But I'm... Ian Buck coming back for fifth year is just his commitment to the program and Brian Kelly. It's it's just amazing how he, he could have went to the NFL draft, got drafted yeah. very early, but he's gonna he's gonna show himself off for twelve more games hopefully and get drafted even higher. Now coming up next we have LSU. Now LSU's in a very, very interesting position, uh, because they basically lost their whole offense. Now uh most of why the receivers besides Jamar Chase, I feel like Jamar Chase is the only positive offseason outlook they had this season again with uh, or the recruiting class but like LSU lost a lot of people I I, I mean I do not see uh, LSU with Joe Burrow's offense last year I mean that was one of the best offenses we ever seen ever uh, maybe Tim Tebow in the 2001 Miami Hurricanes but like um, I I don't see LSU being that good this year I still see them being a 10-win team but I don't see them being that good compared to last year well, here's the difference. If if LSU had a had a had a good quarterback, which we'll get to that later, they'll not they'll be ahead of Notre Dame, no doubt. But True. now Mount Brennan has a huge chance to be an underdog, and that's what Joe Burrow's position was before he threw. True. Multiple True. But they also do not have Joe Brady, who's gone. They're passing corner. Yes, Joe Brady went to the NFL, and, and that's a big loss. Around Jamar Chase, so Jamar Chase will make it happen. I think. I I I mean I see Jamar Chase being the best wide receiver in college football uh, coming up this season, but I, I I don't see LSU going undefeated again. I just don't. All right, now coming in with Wisconsin at number ten. Now they did lose Jonathan Taylor, uh, which was one of the best backs in their history. I mean, so um, I mean, what do you see out of Wisconsin here? Because I I feel like they're just like a mediocre team. Uh, with Zach Bond to to and Chris Ol, 
Uh, they're gone, so they have to re- re- revamp everything. So I don't. I see them being a mediocre team, but um, still in the Big Ten running for the championship. But um, having like a seven five season uh, is better than like a, a mediocre four and eight season. True. Now going on to Oregon at eleven. Now, um, um, uh, we're only gonna go up to fifteen. The next episode, we're gonna go up to the rest of the uh, picks. But Oregon at eleven. Now Oregon with Mario Cristobal, uh, they um, uh, they're in a pretty good position. Uh, um, but the only problem is that they lost Justin Herbert. Um, so that's a big loss. But uh, we'll see what they can do. The big thing is, is the offensive line. They still have pennies so well. True. Um, yeah, he's gonna be a, a tank. That's what we yeah. call it. He, the left tackle, he came come he came out. Uh, he's um he's very capable of moving that offense. And uh, Mario Cristobal will be great as always in lead, leading the pack. But um the big question will be the quarterback and uh, if they can replace Justin Herbert's era. True. All right, now, and let's hope they can replace Justin Herbert. Now, going on to Texas A&M, who they do not need to replace a quarterback. They they still have Kellen Mond. It feels like he's been there forever, to be honest. But, uh, I, I, I mean, they have a very tough schedule every year. And Jimbo Fisher, I mean, what can Jimbo do with this team? Jimbo Fisher has his, has his hands full once again uh, every, like, every year. Um, but Kellen Mond... Last year, so his last year needs to be yeah. um, run for the races. So. All right, now we have a couple more teams here. We have Auburn. Now, Auburn has their sophomore returning Bonix. Now, Bonix looked pretty good last year, but I'm, I'm Bonix did beat Alabama, which was very good for him. I feel like that made like a spark for him. But, I, I mean, they did lose probably the best player in the draft last draft was Derek Brown. I mean, he was just amazing. Marlon Davidson, uh, Nicole, I mean, that's a big off defensive line there. So what do you see out of Auburn? Well, Bo Nix will go down in history for being probably ever, first ever freshman getting Alabama. True. But um, Bo Nix, uh, big, big plans for this year, sophomore year is like a, a a yeah. Stone from fresh performance, so just keep it up. I feel like Gus Mazan's pretty, pretty much elite, and yeah. that pro- Auburn Auburn program is looking good. We're back. Just kidding. Texas is up next at thirteen now. Very interesting news that um, Adam Schefter uh, uh, tweeted out this morning. Um, and that four days like after voluntary summer workouts began, that uh, 13 of its football players got tested positive for coronavirus. Big deal there, so they're not going to be able to practice probably. So, but I, I, I mean, what do you? I mean, Texas is in such a weird position because a lot of people expected massive things from this year, uh, last year beating, and they did not beat Oklahoma on the river. Um, so, what do you say out of Texas? I believe it. Last year, yeah. Um, so he has one last shot to beat Oklahoma. Maybe see them twice this year. Tom yeah. Herman needs to buckle up and like lead, 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 lead the Longhorns offense. I mean, that's their only main focus. Um, defense looks pretty solid, mm-hmm. but Texas, if they need to have a valuable season, all I gotta say is that Oklahoma. Check market, bubble it, whatever they gotta do, just yeah. Preparation before so they can be ready. Um, but be, as we said before, Oklahoma is ready to play every single, every single snap, and uh, their wide receivers will be ready. Yeah, I I'm, I mean, Texas is pretty annoying with the we back. I mean, like, a lot of people are making fun of them, but I get it. I mean, they had a pretty bad season last season. Now, moving on to our last team in this episode, and then the next episode we'll go over the other 15 teams. But um, we're, uh, that is Oklahoma State. Now, this is pretty interesting. And so so both All-American running back, Chubba Herbert, and their All-American wide receiver, Tower Walls, are now are return to school and not go to the draft. So that's pretty, very interesting there. Yeah, it's all about Mike Gundy. We say his his flow at the at, at his hair, but it's not only that. It's, uh, it's the Cowboys offense that 
that they're really committed to, you know. So yeah, uh, with with those two pieces coming back, it's gonna be a fun-filled Oklahoma State year and a chance to be. Oklahoma, if there's point intent to. Yeah. It'll be a big upset, and I'm really rooting for them because they don't really get that much attention, but uh, in 247, they're ranked number 15, so I really like that. Um, they, um, uh, uh, I mean, they have a pretty soft non-conference schedule with Oregon State, Tulsa, and Western Illinois, so they're a guaranteed win, so we'll see what they can do. All right, thank you guys for joining us on this episode of the podcast. Uh, we will do the next teams after that. Uh, next podcast, I'm Ethan Bass. I'm Ryan And have a good day, y'all. Thanks for watching. Listen.